Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows could now face criminal contempt charges. Lawmakers are threatening the charges after Meadows said that he'll stop cooperating with the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Meadows has already handed over some documents to lawmakers, and now he's criticizing the way the panel is investigating and says that he won't work with them, citing the court battle over executive privilege. Catherine Harridge joins me now to discuss this investigation. Okay, so this is sort of a surprise. What are we learning about the former chief of staff's kind of about face and decision to no longer cooperate? Amory, good morning. Mark Meadows and his attorney say that they were willing to provide thousands of documents to the committee, that they've been engaging with the select committee over several days, but they've reached the conclusion that the select, com select committee, pardon me, will press very hard on issues that they believe should be shielded by executive privilege. That's what protects conversations between the president and his top advisors. In addition to that, they say it's come to their attention that the select committee has issued a subpoena for a third party to take a look at other communications. So, on balance, they're now going to severely limit any cooperation with the committee. They held out the prospect that they might consider written questions and answers, so a very controlled environment, but certainly not a deposition, which was scheduled for this morning. So then, I suppose this raises the likelihood that Meadows could be found in contempt of Congress, or they could move forward with those charges? Right. Well, it certainly increases the likelihood of that, Anne-Marie. Late yesterday, the vice chair and the chair of the select committee issued a statement saying that if Mark Meadows did not show up for the scheduled deposition today, that they would proceed with contempt in the House. The thing is, is that Mark Meadows has provided very limited cooperation, so it would be a harder argument to make for the Justice Department that he qualifies for criminal contempt, like President Trump's former advisor, Steve Bannon, who essentially, like, dropped the curtain on any kind of cooperation with the committee. So what we see playing out now may well be a very public negotiation. This committee wants Mark Meadows' testimony because he was with the president throughout the day on January 6th. But if they bring criminal contempt charges, that takes Meadows' testimony and effectively puts it out of reach while it works its way through the judicial process. They also understand that Mark Meadows does not want to face the very serious charge of criminal contempt. So it may be sort of a high-stakes negotiation we're seeing play out at this point. Um, in the meantime, uh, former Vice President mm -hmm. Pence, one of his senior aides, mm -hmm. is willing to cooperate. His name is Mark Short. Mm -hmm. What details is the panel hoping he can fill in? Well, Mark Short could potentially be extremely important to the select committee. He is somebody who may not be a household name for folks at home, but he's someone with a lot of access, meaning that he was inside the White House in early January and that also he's someone with a lot of credibility here in Washington, D.C. And when you look at the timeline, Short was present for what's believed to be a pivotal conversation on January 4th, where it's reported that President Trump made the argument to Vice President Pence that he should delay the counting of the Electoral College votes. And, and Mark Short, and this is very important, was on Capitol Hill January 6th with then-Vice President Mike Pence. So, in many ways, Mark Short is like the fly on the wall in a lot of the important conversations that the Select Committee wants to explore. So, in the meantime, uh, the one person who has been charged with contempt of Congress mm -hmm. is former Trump advisor Steve Bannon. His mm -hmm. uh, trial date is set for July. And there had been some speculation that, you know, this was kind of part of a chess move, in, in a way, to kind Correct. of push this whole issue down the road, right, mm -hmm. past, perhaps even past the election. Mm -hmm. So, Steve Bannon is, uh, the trial date set for July, but is there a possibility that it could be pushed as well? Well, you're right. It does feel like a chess game. The government wanted to go much earlier in late spring of next year. Steve Bannon's lawyers argued for October, which you're quite right, bumps right up against the midterm elections. It kind of kicks the can down the road. The judge split the difference here and has set that trial date for mid-July. But the judge is leaving the docket open for each of the parties to file additional motions about the timing of this case. And that's just one of the issues the court has to decide. They're also looking at the issue 
issue of the records that will be available to the prosecution and the defense, and whether they should also be available to the public in real time so there can be ongoing analysis of the records and what it means with the context of January 6th. So it's not just the trial date, but it's also the type of information that will be publicly available for all of us to review and make our own decisions. Really interesting. Catherine, mm -hmm. thank you very much. You're welcome.